time is upon us. Sexy bloodsucker Aaron Wasson stops by to give us a history lesson with Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Hunter. Also, take cover. We've got the exclusive trailer for the new comic book flick, Dread. Then we've got some recommendations for what to watch this summer while you wait for Breaking Bad to finally premiere. Don't blink, just watch right now. from Los Angeles. Yes, we are. How, you're looking very spiffy today. Oh, thank There's you. The shirt is tucked in. Yes, on my belt. first two days of the show, I was untucked, I was unshaven, and I actually watched the shows yesterday, and I was like, you look very awful next to beautiful Miss <laughs> no. Candace Bailey. No, you never looked well, awful. You no, looked good. I look like I was you on a different... Better. Thank you. I look like I was on, uh, I was like, Tool Time Tim's next door neighbor, <laughs> being like, I'll help you. Can I help you paint that chair? And now I look like I'm ready to help a lady do a nice television show. Oh, you look very so. Yes, so it's the summer solstice. It is. <laughs> Longest day of the year. It's crazy, huh? Yes. Yes, after Happy this. Happy summer. Yeah, happy summer. Oh, We're... Yeah. I'm dressed all summer today for Yes, it. indeed you are, yes. yes. Yeah. For the solstice, we're actually going to put on our moon and star robes later, and uh, we're going to sacrifice some virgins. Yeah. Maybe some non-virgins. We're going to just sacrifice people. Two or people. three, that's all. You're not going to go crazy. <laughs> but uh, anyway, right now, let's go around the net. <laughs> than to finally make use of those backyards. You know, you can have a barbecue, but maybe run through the sprinkler, or if you have a spare water mill and comprehensive health coverage, mm -hmm. you can do this. One, go. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that looks like so much fun. Yeah. That just one summer. Yeah. Wow. He did. You know, a lot of people think American engineers are losing the technology race to China, but that Rube Goldberg paralyzing <laughs> begs to differ. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, there are only a few rules for taking the train. Have your ticket ready and keep your voice down. Yeah. Oh, and finally, when you do sit down, make sure you're actually inside the train. This guy's under a train. Brad, you're I know, but I'm gonna die. Brad, you're gonna die. You don't need the train. What? I'm bleeding. You're bleeding? Chuck that to me. Now, 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 chuck it to me. You got time to roll over between wheels. Next one, next one, not that one. No, 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 no. All right. No, 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 no. Hurry up, man. Oh, my dude. Seriously? Why? Uh, I think I said he was bleeding, but he didn't look hurt. Yeah, I, I think that was just his blood trying to shoot out into a smarter person's body. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. The people at Jest Originals understand that a microphone is a powerful thing. You hold it up to somebody's face and they will speak into it. Yes, they will. Just keep in mind that it's not their opinions that matter. It's that in this case, their opinions have no basis in fact. God bless America. Hi, we're here in New York City today to prove that people will believe anything you say if you look like a newsman and are holding a microphone. Earlier this week, President Obama fired the U.S. Senate. What do you think about that? Uh, I actually hadn't even heard that. No? Embarrassingly enough. Germany invaded Poland earlier today. Do you think America should get involved? I almost want to say no. It's so early on. Those are two very powerful countries. Chinese internet usage, if it continues to grow at its current rate, the world will experience a worldwide shortage of internet huh. by the year 2025. What do you think about that? That's a big problem. I think we definitely 
America especially is really behind in terms of internet speed. Uh, so you think we could be doing more? I think we need to be doing more. It's true. When you hold a microphone, your powers of persuasion are amplified. Don't you think it's terrific that you're getting a generosity award for making my car payments for the next 12 months? Get out of here. Well, that's great. Yeah. I, is, is it like a plaque or a, a medal? <laughs> It's a statue. Oh, fun. You know, the president was born right here in America. Ooh. All right, that's great. It's not a magic microphone. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> um, so the first time they made a Judge Dredd movie, they put Sylvester Stallone in it. Whoops. <laughs> but even Hollywood can learn from its mistakes. Here's the AOTS exclusive trailer for the badass new movie Dredd. That's with two Ds. Now, lots of things happen every day in this crazy old world of ours. And right now, I'm going to try and make sense of it all. We just showed you a cool film trailer, but sometimes there's too much of a good thing. The Dark Knight Rises is going to be all over your eyeballs in about a month. And this week, Chris Nolan and his team really stepped up the promotion. He released the final official trailer for the movie and unveiled a new website with tons of footage and music so fans could cut their own version for television. And to this I'd like to say, stop it. Look, I know Hollywood needs trailers to get people excited about movies, but you guys are giving away way too much info. I don't care how many times you show me Andy Samberg trying to hold in diarrhea and that's my boy. But I already had to stop watching promos for Prometheus when they straight up gave away what the original alien looked like. Oh! Think about what a great scare that would have been in the movie if they didn't ruin it for everyone. So I am now officially not watching trailers anymore. That's it. I'm done. You guys already have our money, so stop giving away the cool stuff. And if you have to release a trailer, just do it like this. We got some big tech news this week from Microsoft. First, there was the announcement of the new Windows Phone 8, named, I believe, for all eight users. <laughs> it seems like just yesterday that I was ignoring Windows 1 through 7. Uh, honestly, I haven't actually met anyone who owns a Windows Phone, but I'm sure those people exist somewhere, like uh, at the actual Microsoft headquarters, uh, probably at Bill Gates' house, and uh, within Windows Phone ads. <laughs> Uh, but the huge news was the introduction of Microsoft's new Surface tablet. Of course, everyone was quick to dub it an iPad ripoff. I mean, it's got a familiar design. It'll be sold in branded Microsoft stores. And even the silver fox doing the tech demo was, <laughs> was dressed in a sensible Steve Jobsian jeans and sweater combo. Delicious. <laughs> Of course, everyone yelling the word derivative forgets that Microsoft introduced software for tablet PCs back in 2002 and then had it resoundingly ignored for the next decade. <laughs> so, admittedly, they're kind of getting screwed in the arena of public perception. But it didn't help that halfway through the Surface tech demo, this happened. Movies and entertainment look great as well. Oops. <laughs> Excuse me, just a second. <laughs> Surface works great for entertainment as well. So, while Microsoft hasn't revealed the pricing of the Surface yet, I hope it costs half as much as the iPad, since it looks like you'll need two of them. <laughs> of course, to be fair, Microsoft is kind of copying Apple in the fail department, too, since Steve Jobs did the same thing back in 2010, trying to demo the iPhone. <laughs> There we go, yes, I know. All you bloggers need to turn off your base stations, turn off your Wi-Fi, every notebook, I'd like them to put, put them down on the floor, and all of you look around, I'd like you to police each other. This never freezes up, so you guys haven't turned off all your Wi-Fi. Uh, that's what I do as a comedian. I just blame the crowd when something goes wrong. Look, I get it, things go wrong. Hell, we're a live TV show, and we embarrass ourselves all the time. For more information, visit Facebook.com, Facebook.com, <laughs> Facebook. uh, Facebook, or Facebook.com.
Oh, good old face Bach. Look, but then again, our budget is $34 per episode. But when you put hundreds of millions into product development, it seems like you could at least make sure that your new device doesn't stroke out, and not in the fun way, at your big presentation. Like this. <laughs> little buddy, I want to give him a little robo-hug. Hey, at least the robot got a modesty screen. When we go off the rails, we just get a Photoshop of a pissed-off cat. <laughs> And now for some political news. Uh, this week, the U.S. Supreme Court may be ruling on the constitutionality of the 2010 Affordable Care Act, otherwise known as Obamacare. And a bipartisan team of senators has asked the court to broadcast the decision live on television. Now, wherever you stand on the issue of health care reform, I think we can all agree on one thing. Putting the Supreme Court on TV is a terrible idea. I mean, have you seen those justices? They're too hot for prime time. Antonin Scalia? Mamma mia. Sonia Sotomayor? I'd like to file her brief. Ruth Bader Ginsburg? Girl, you got me praying for a wardrobe malfunction. So if C-SPAN wants to avoid an FCC violation, best keep this broadcast audio only. All right, and now I want to take a minute here to discuss Adam Carolla's interview in the New York Post, in which he said, among other things, dudes are funnier than chicks, and we're regarding writing for television, they make you hire a certain number of chicks, and they're always the least funny on the writing staff. I disagree, and I feel comfortable saying that I know what I'm talking about. In 1998, I was a student at NYU. I was crazy about comedy, and I became a sworn servant of funny after a friend brought me to see the Upright Citizens Brigade do a long-form improvised show called Ass Cat. I was riveted watching the quartet create the highest octane, funniest entertainment I'd ever seen. Amy Poehler was amazing every week, and they always had female guest improvisers like Rachel Dratch and Tina Fey, women with vicious, unstoppable intellect and comedic chops that would be hard for anyone to follow. They taught me that the funniest thing in the world is when women and men work together. And today we have Twitter, and that reveals how systemic sexism truly is in the world of comedy. With Twitter, we got a true meritocracy. You no longer have to get hired by a team of producers to get your jokes out there. If you're funny, you're going to get noticed, and that's that. Last year, when I was putting together staff for a pilot, I tried and failed to hire the hilarious Megan Amram from Parks and Rec, comedian Morgan Murphy, who writes for Two Broke Girls, and the co-head writer of Jimmy Kimmel Live, Molly McNearney. All of them are hilarious, and all of them are women. But none of them could do it, because they already had jobs. Jobs that any man or woman would kill for. So I wound up having a staff composed of primarily dudes, who were hilarious, but I couldn't get a bunch of the funny women I wanted. Now, I'm a comedian, and I'll remain a consumer of comedy until the day I die. I know what's funny, and what's funny doesn't hinge on what flavor genitalia you're packing. <laughs> to suggest otherwise is ignorance. The controversy about women in comedy wouldn't truly be settled until we hear from Tyler Perry's Medea. <laughs> but I'll try, I'll try to bring some closure to the issue when I chat with comedian and writer Morgan Murphy about sexism in comedy right after the break. Yeah! Let's get a lady perspective on women in comedy. Uh, joining me now is a comedian whose writing work includes Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Fallon, Crank Yackers, and Two Broke Girls. Please welcome one of the funniest people I know, Morgan Murphy. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Pleasure to have you. Uh, first off, I want to thank you for representing all women on Earth throughout history <laughs> yeah. and speaking for them today. No pressure, no pressure at all to be funny yeah, today. Yeah, none whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, no, you're qualified. So, uh, what are your thoughts on Carola's comments? Uh, I, you know, I, I, I know that uh, I, I should be here bashing. So I, I, I've worked with Adam, mm -hmm. and so it's weird. I've worked with him, and I honestly think he's incredibly funny I mean, mm -hmm. he's one of the most naturally funny people I've ever worked with when he was talking about like women in the writers room not being funny yeah. I I've worked in the writers room with him so yes. I very selfishly 
mm -hmm. went to, oh, well, he's talking about me. Sure. <laughs> Very, the, par very paranoid, like, in a narcissistic way. Yeah. I, we got some of the tapes of the unedited transcript, and he did specifically mention you by name, but they excised <laughs> yeah. that for the... I, I assume. No, he I didn't assume. at all. No, he didn't. No, I, that's the hardest part, though, is when you go, yeah. I don't know, I, I, he's always been great to me. Right, right, right. He's always been super funny. He said this. Do I agree with it? No. Yeah. That's the thing. He's funny. The end. He's. I listened to his radio show for years. Yeah. I listened to him on Love Line, and he's funny. But you know, I disagree with those particular comments. Sure. And we're in the United States where you can say that. So yeah, I mean, well, let's take a peek at what Twitter is saying. I think we uh, we have some up on the screen that you we can take a peek Twitter at. Twitter yes. here. Yeah, we do. It, well, I'm gonna summon it out of the air. <laughs> so he says. Somebody said, uh, oh, yeah, zombie-ionism, of course, a frequent contributor, said, uh, as a comedian, he deserves a wide berth. Happy that he did not back down from his statement. All comedians deserve some space. Do you have any thoughts on that statement? Uh, sure. I mean, everything mm -hmm. can be defended with I'm a comedian. That's yes. the greatest thing about being a comedian. That's true. <laughs> like, You're racist. No, I'm a comedian. Yeah. It was a joke. <laughs> I'm a comedian. I do that all the time. Yeah. Like, Plus, you know. those people can dance really well. Yes. <laughs> Positive stereotype. Yeah. We're talking about Chinese women, right? That's a fact. Yep. Uh, yeah. No, I, I, I feel like you can use that all the time. It depends if you're, if you're joking, if you're making a statement. The statement was totally. a statement of truth, right? It yeah. was like, this is the way it is in yeah. writers' rooms, and it's not yeah. always that way. Sometimes it is, yeah. but you know, mostly. I mean. What we're forgetting here is that mm -hmm. most people mm -hmm. are terribly unfunny. Correct. Not women, not men, mm -hmm. like most human beings. Yeah. Most human beings who are not in comedy uh, are not funny. Mm -hmm. And almost a lot of people in comedy, not funny. That is a fact. Just people. Yeah. Let's, we're, we're, there's no argument about that. I, I want to just say that and have someone get mad at me. I know, I agree. Human being and go, and you may recall, last year, I would call you, I, like, every other day, and I'd be like, can you come in now? And you'd be like, no. Can you come in now? No. Because right. you were working all the time or doing shows because you're an amazing comedian. And, yeah, people came after me because I wrote a blog post yesterday after he said this. Yes. And they were like, well, by listing those six women by name, you proved his point. There's only six funny women in Hollywood. And I was like, no, there's like eight or nine. You right. know? <laughs> no, like, there's only 140 characters. I can only break. fit so many. So uh, now how about in the comedy clubs? Have you ever encountered anything like on the road? I know in more of the urban areas, you're not going to get too much guff. For being a lady, but it can happen out there. You don't tend there. to get guff in urban areas. To begin <laughs> that's, with. A, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. You might. Hey, yeah. wait. I know. Yeah. You might get dissed. Yes. Right. Uh, good one. Yeah. <laughs> Thank uh, you. They just I, said that. I don't get no. I, I, the road is. Uh, I mean, going on the. It's funny. I was just thinking mm -hmm. about the last time I was on the road. Uh, I don't think I was treated any differently than the mm -hmm. male comics because the first night I was taken to a. A delightful strip club. Oh wow! <laughs> a delightful strip club. Like the owner came back, and, hey, we're going to a strip club, and I was like, wow. uh, "All right, is that what we do?" And it was it was real fun. Wow. The only <laughs> real food. The only time I ever went to a strip club with women was when I was working on a TV show, and we shot a thing at a women's at a world's strongest women competition, <laughs> and a lot of the women were big and burly, and at the end of the day, they liked to watch women undress, and so they were they were too shy to give the strippers money, so they'd give me money. They'd be like, "Go put it in her thing." It was, I think as a comic, watching strippers is a best because you, especially as a female comedian, you watch you go, yeah. oh, I'm not that messed up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like, yeah. something in my childhood went right. Yeah, I would say if you're not, then there's like, and this doesn't apply just to women, but there's the, the membrane between you and that is like wafer thin. It's like, just like, oh, sure. boy, yo, 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 yeah. you know what I mean? That, so. There was a woman at probably about 70 pounds overweight with just a tattoo across her gut that said man's ruin. Now you we're know? talking. <laughs> but, there was, but there was a part of me that was just yeah. like, I'm almost there. Yes. I'm all right. very close. I'm almost there. I know. There. And there's a part of me that's like, what club was that? Seriously. Um, okay. So what do you think? Uh, you've written for Jimmy Kimmel, and now you yeah. write for women on Two Broke Girls. Is there a difference in writing for either sex, do you think? Well, there's a difference in writing for different people. Mm -hmm. you know, the, way more than, you know, writing. I, I would say there's a bigger difference writing for Kimmel and Fallon. Sure. You know, you're just changing characters and changing voices. Yeah. It's, I'm just vexed here. Are you saying that women are people? <laughs> I, I think Morgan Murphy may have had the final I, word I here. Saying, yeah. Women are people, and thus they can be funny. Right. Morgan, thank you so much for oh, joining us. Yeah. Really appreciate it. All right, and now I need a break, and Sarah's got some news for us. Let's start the feed. All the news you need to know. Wednesday, June 20th, and here are your top stories. Google is cracking down on people who use YouTube to illegally rip music. 
Due to pressure from record labels, Google's going after sites like YouTube-MP3.org, which make it easy for people to take one of the millions of music videos on YouTube, in particular, songs which are simply cut to images and convert them into easily downloadable MP3 files. Google's threatening legal action against such sites, alleging, alleging they violate the site's terms of service. Though their actions may prove futile, anyone with a little tech know-how can simply download a browser add-on that does the same thing. But uh, keep fighting the good fight, guys. Yeah. Um, it's impossible to keep up with all the Hollywood movers and shakers. Luckily, you have me to sift through all the news. Like Rob Zombie's next movie and the fate of the Dumb and Dumber sequel, which is apparently falling apart. Entertainment Tonight says that Jim Carrey is leaving the project that was supposed to be a true sequel to the 1994 Fairly Brothers comedy, which was announced in April. Sources say Carrey became increasingly frustrated with the studios and their lack of enthusiasm. Elsewhere in Tinseltown, Rob Zombie is setting his sights on hockey. The metalhead turned director is going to direct Broad Street Bullies, the story of the 1970s era Philadelphia Flyers and their violent rise to the top of the NHL. He's pitching it as uh, Boogie Nights meets Rocky on ice. <laughs> Perfect for the kids, right? Yeah. <laughs> and finally, speaking of kids, Reading Rainbow, the children's show that taught the wonders of literacy, now has its own app. <laughs> the iPad optimized app is a new reading adventure where users can explore islands filled with audiobooks read by celebrity actors, including the show's original host and producer, LeVar Burton. The app will be subscription-based and comes with 150 books. So if you own an iPad and have young ones in your family, do them a solid and introduce them to an app that won't saute their brains. Yeah. I'm Sarah Underwood. You have just been fed. And now back over to Candace and Rob. Thank you, Sarah. This Fourth of July weekend, do something really American. Watch Bruce Lee movie. Yay! <laughs> G4 will be showing four classic flicks featuring the Chinese martial arts master, including The Big Boss and Enter the Dragon. It's a marathon that's so badass, your shirt might get ripped off. Woohoo! The fists start flying July 7th at 9 a.m., only on G4. Stella Ed, the hopefully defanged Aaron Watson from Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter, will be here live. <laughs> Finally, a historical drama that gets history right. I presume you know what I can do with this. Well, I know what you can do against one vampire. But against 20? Welcome, Aaron Wasson. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Now, just to clarify, you're not an actual vampire, are you? No, I'm not. A zombie or a Franken woman? <laughs> nothing like that? No, just a good old Texan. A good old Texan, fantastic. Do you live here in LA now? I do. I'm between uh, New York and LA, by coastal. Right on. Now, in vampire lore, they have a number of weaknesses silver, wooden stakes, garlic. What's your personal kryptonite? Well, I think something that would deter me would be patchouli. <laughs> totally! It's That's... just not a nice smell. Yes. I see, I can smell somebody with patchouli coming from a mile away and I will cross the street, so. Oh, me too. <laughs> I was in a coffee shop the other day, and two guys came in. They had dreadlocks, and they stank of patchouli. And I was like, I gotta go home now. Yeah, pretty much. Not a not a good odor. There's lots of smells in this world. Why would you choose that one? I don't know. Um, so now, uh, where did you shoot the film? We shot the whole thing in New Orleans, which New Orleans is an amazing city to to be for three and a half months. I'll oh, tell you that. So great. 
a lot of good jazz music. And uh, a lot of times when I go there, people will be like, oh, show me your, for beads and stuff. And I'm yeah. like, I mean, right, you Well, know? And there's a drive-by daiquiri stand. So it's kind of amazing. As a pedestrian in New Orleans, you have to assume that everyone is drunk and driving. For real. <laughs> I know. Did you live in, in, growing up in Texas, did you get to go there much growing up? I didn't spend a whole lot of time in New Orleans growing up. I didn't. Mm -hmm. um, I'd been once before, a while ago. This was maybe five years ago for a Prospect One art fair that would, it was the very first one that was happening in New Orleans and it was, it fell over Halloween. So mm -hmm. it was an insane experience. New Orleans, costumes, voodoo.